excited about Vitality coming up. excited about that is for sure but that's not what I'm gonna get into up here today um, are you guys learning yeah. you got something out this morning so far yeah. I think uh, we all owe a lot of gratitude to all of the ambassadors the stars the five stars that have taken the stage you guys they're pouring their hearts out they don't have to do that Give a lot of love to all the Um, this is one of my favorite regions to come to because it's actually the smallest region we have in Visalis in this country. Um, and the reason I get excited about that is because I look at a room like this of whatever it is, a few hundred people, and then I look at all the different cities and all the different states all of you represent. What state are you from? Indiana! Pennsylvania. What cities are in the house? Indiana! Are there people in your city that need our help? Yes. Oh, yeah. Are we ready to help them? Yes. And I see how a room like this of a few hundred people leaving with the information you have today, the belief you have today, can go out there and really make an impact and watch the entire North Northeast grow from a few hundred people to eventually a few thousand people that will translate into literally millions of people all throughout your cities and your states that are uh, losing weight, getting fit, making money, feeling good, getting inspired. Is that what today is about? Is setting the precedent to go do that? Is that what today is about? Yes? So we all have our story. My story, some of you guys have had a chance to hear. Maybe many of you haven't. So I'll, I'll share with you real quick. Obviously, I'm not from this side of the country. I'm from uh, the other side, right out there. Grew up in Southern California. Um, a lot of people, when they meet myself, Nick and Ryan, there's three co-founders of the company. And the most obvious thing most people realize when they first meet us is we're relatively young. Um, they look at the size of Isalis, a, a company that, you know, really four years ago was on the, the brink of failure. And now four years later, you know, finished last year at $624 million in sales. Uh, the fastest growing weight loss and fitness company in North America today. Um, you know, millions of people have lost millions of pounds. We're just doing our part to take weight off the world. That's the company that you guys are a part of. How many of you guys are proud to be a part of that company? crazy as we wake up every day and truly we feel like we're just getting started. There's so much work to be done. Um, but the first thing they see when they see those numbers and they meet us, they go, these guys are relatively young and they assume we came from some business background or business pedigree or, you know, some long family tree of entrepreneurs. Um, how many of you guys in the room here today uh, have some sort of business background or entrepreneurial background prior to getting involved in by Salas in the challenge, okay? How many of you, is this your first leap into the crazy concept of entrepreneurship? Wow, you guys give these people a big round of applause until we're half the room. So for those of you guys that raise your hand second, you know, my story is probably more closer to yours. I didn't grow up in, you know, a business family. Matter of fact, the concept of entrepreneurship was never introduced to me uh, inside my household. I grew up in your average kind of middle class upbringing out there in Southern California. Um, they leaned really to the conservative side. Did any of you guys grow up in a really conservative household? I mean, like, really conservative, right? Um, I'll give you insight into kind of my family tree. My mom was a principal, and my dad was a cop. Not meant to be a joke, but laugh at my pain. Go for it. Um, uh, some of you guys, you know, who follow, uh, follow me online, you realize they just got married last month. I'm very excited. You know, uh, my now wife's dad is a minister. So I got a cop and a principal and a minister. Uh, conservative. In the box. In the box. I remember growing up, and you know, all, all the way from as little as I can remember, when I grew up, I always wanted to be successful. How many of you guys can remember, at, you know, at a young age, when you grew up, you wanted to be something. You wanted to be successful. How many of you guys had that feeling, right? 
And I think everybody, I, I don't think there's many of you guys in the room that, you know, you can remember when you're five years old, you're like, when I grow up, I want to be a complete and utter failure, right? Like, I don't think many kids have that belief passed through their mind, right? I wanted to be successful, but in my household, I was taught that in order to be successful, you had to be smart. Did any of you guys remember being taught that growing up? To be successful, you had to be what? Smart. It was all about what kind of what you brought home. Great. Great. And you guys, that's what I was taught from a young age. And I wanted to be what? Smart. Successful. Yeah. Study hard, work hard. I can, true, true story, I can remember sitting at my desk in fifth grade, stressed out. Because if you didn't get good grades in fifth and sixth grade, you wouldn't get in the honor roll classes in middle school, which wouldn't, you wouldn't get into the advanced placement classes in high school, which means you're not going to graduate with an accelerated GPA, which means you're not going to get into the university you should go to, which means law school is pretty much off the hook. Your life is ruined if you didn't pass social studies after recess, right? <laughs> so I followed that path. I can still go to my, uh, my elementary school. I still have my name on a plaque. As the outstanding sixth grader, I can still go to my high school. I still have my name on a plaque as a student body president. I graduated there with a 4.2. Went to a top six university in the country. I have degrees in political science, with emphasis in public law, minor in psychology. I did that in a total of three years, magna cum laude, Latin honors. Mm. You say wow. I say why. Because <laughs> I wanted to be what? And to be successful. You had to be. Really? Is that true? No. Is that true? No. How many of you guys know someone right now that's a really highly intelligent, broke person? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How many of you guys have ever met someone that's really, really successful? Not so smart. <laughs> Dumb rich people out? No pointing, no pointing, no pointing, no pointing. <laughs> It's interesting. I remember sitting there, and the first third of our life was controlled by acronyms. True? GPA, SAT, the look on some of your guys' faces is still scary. <laughs> Every time he did something wrong, the teacher would always point it out in what color? Red. Red. <laughs> Fill in the bubbles. Take out your number two. Pencil. Why? Any of you guys ever get like rebellious and I'm gonna use a number three today and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> get in line. Follow the. Anytime we didn't fit in the perfect box, there were some penalties, some punishments, sit in the corner, put that on your head, you got detention after school, any of you guys, any of you guys those kids? <laughs> the first third of our life, building a simple thought that, well, to be successful you have to be what? Isn't that what you thought? Weren't the, the A students going to be the rich kids and the B students would get by and the C and D students, well, they do labor job. Mom didn't want you playing with the F students. <laughs> Sorry, F students. It's just the way it is. And then at some point, most of us realize, right, that the first third of our life we were taught certain things that are not even You guys and I'm belaboring on one simple thought, one simple belief, but the reality is we were taught all kinds of things from the time we were this big that aren't even what? Some of you guys are like, well, why is this guy talking about when I was five or when I was 10 or when I was 15? I'm a grown up now. Still going around and doing things because of the ideas that were put up here when you were this big. You see, I had a, a philosophy I adopted kind of early in life, and I started to realize that the things people told me a lot of times weren't even the truth. 
And the philosophy was this. When you stop doing what you think you're supposed to do, and you start doing what you were really meant to do, that's when the script ends, and that's when life really <laughs> begins. You guys, I meet people all across now the world. It's not just North America. Now we're off into Europe, sitting in rooms full of people, you know, all different backgrounds, all different walks of life. And I still find that people today are going around and doing things, not because it's what you want to do, not because it's what you thought when you were five years old, when you grew up, this is what life would be, but they're running around doing things every single day because still to this day, that's what you think you're supposed to do. It's a script. A lot of times people get stuck running a what? How many of you guys know people that get stuck in routines? It seems like they're doing the same thing every single day. Wake up in the morning, exact same time. Hit that exact same snooze button 13 times. You don't want to get out of bed. All right? Get up, do the same thing, eat the same thing, say the same thing, leave the house, drive the same way, see the same people, think the same stuff, listen to the same radio, go to the same place, sit at the same place, do the same same thing. To break at the exact same time, say hi to the exact same people, go back to the exact same thing all the way until you go home, drive the exact same way home, listen to the exact same station, go home, right? Say hi to the wife, say hi to the kids, eat dinner, go to bed tomorrow, rinse, lather, repeat. Anybody know people stuck in that cycle? I once heard the average person has 60,000 thoughts a day. 90% of them are the same as yesterday. Some of you guys will catch that one tomorrow. <laughs> yep, thought that one yesterday. Yep, thought that one yesterday. Yep, Blake was right. <laughs> We get stuck running a script, and a script that was put there, not yesterday, not the week before, but all the way from when we were this big by people we had no control that who were around us. Our family, big influences, our teachers, big influences, our environment around us, big influences, all of which you have no control. You don't get to select that when you come into this world. You guys agree with me on this one? Yes. But they're the ones that put the script in your head that many of you are still running today. When I say script, what I'm really talking about is I'm really talking about a belief system, right? I'm really talking about a paradigm, right? I'll give you guys an equation. When I finally understood the power of this equation, it totally changed the way I looked at everything. Because I know one thing for sure. Everybody in this room, you're in this room because you want different results. Would that be a true statement? Would that be a true statement? Yes. Right? How many of you guys are willing to go out there and you're, you're humble enough to admit that your life may be good, life may be fine, life may be good today, but you want something different? Who, do, who wants something yeah. different in this world? How many of you guys know there's something more that you deserve, right? Yes. How many of you guys want different results? Let me hear you. Yeah. Yeah, we all do. It's one thing that attracts people in the Vice Alice community. We're all like minds. We want something more. We refuse to settle for what we have. We want different results. Most people realize to get something different, we must do something different. Because most people understand that part. And it's true. Do something different, get a different result, right? Continue to do what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always got. That's just the way this works. For things to change, you must change. You guys, we've heard these before. Do something different, get something different. What a lot of people don't realize is that's only part of the equation. I see people all the time that say, I want something different. And you know what? They get motivated. They get inspired. They leave an event like this and they do something different. And you know what? They get something different for a short period of time. It's called motivation. I'm excited. I'm going to go do something. I got a result. Next week, I'm not so excited. You guys, how many of you are in this room because you're not looking for something short term, you're not looking for a burst of motivation, you're in this room because you want to make lasting, radical change for the rest of your life? You want lasting change for the rest of your life, right? It's not about just changing actions, it's about realizing we do what we do because of our beliefs. You guys, we do what we do every single day because of what we believe. Why do you brush your teeth every morning? For those of you guys that choose to do that. <laughs> some of you guys gave me some strange looks on that question. <laughs> Why do you brush your teeth every morning? Yeah, because you believe if you don't, what? <laughs> you don't want that to happen. If you believe you didn't have to, then guess what? You wouldn't. Right? We do what we do every single day because 
of what we believe. Truth? Truth. Simple thing. Question for all of you guys. Literal question. Give me an answer. What's a belief? Uh, it's a simple. What's it? Yeah, we all know what this is, right? We all understand the concept. What's a belief? A thought? Yeah. What else? Conviction. What else? Faith. Feeling. What is it? Faith. Faith? What did you say? Standing. Ingrained? Yeah, these are all good answers, right? You know, thoughts, things that are ingrained. To me, here's my definition of a belief. A belief is just a batch of similar thoughts. It's a feeling of absolute certainty. Keyword there, it's a what? Feeling of absolute certainty. Is the belief absolute certainty? I'll, I'll phrase it another way. Is the belief always true? No. no. You sure? You Are you positive? You guys sound confused. I believe. <laughs> a belief is a feeling of absolute certainty. Not always what? Here's what, I'll prove it to you. Here's what I mean. At one time, didn't the smartest people on planet Earth go around professing, right, that the world is flat? Matter of fact, didn't all of our scientists go out there and teach at one point that the entire solar system revolves around Earth? Wasn't that fact at one point? Is that true? No. How come some of you guys are writing notes on that? <laughs> Solar system does not revolve around Earth. We're not flat. Okay. We're learning today. That's good. That's good. That's good. A belief is a feeling of absolute certainty, but it's not necessarily true. Okay? I'll give you guys an analogy of how this really works. You guys remember the days where we used to have physical structures called libraries? You guys remember that? Yeah. Right? Remember you had to go to the library and what would, you had to flip through all those little things to find what you were looking for? What, what was that whole like system called? The, why do we know that still? The Dewey Decimal System, right? Where it categorized all the books in the library by author or genre or type or category, right? The Dewey Decimal System. That's how our brain works. Okay? The way our brain works is a lot like the ultimate librarian. It's like the best librarian ever created. You're talking fully automated, instantaneous, doesn't have to think. Every time you have a thought, you just had a thought, it creates a card, much like that little card we used to have in the library. <laughs> goes into your mind, the ultimate librarian, goes and it searches your entire archive of thoughts. Instantaneously, it finds the file that has similar thoughts. And it takes that one new card. Boom, you just had another thought. Created a card, searched the library, found the file, inserts that thought right next to all the other thoughts that are similar to that category. You just had another thought instantaneously. Searched every thought you ever had in your mind. Found the file, inserted it right next to that thought. You just had another thought. Searched the entire library, found that file, inserted that card. Every time we have a thought, it creates a reference. It creates a what? Reference. That reference is a card, searches the library, files, that thought. The more references we have, the more thoughts that we have, the more cards that we have, the bigger the file of similar thoughts, the stronger the belief. Stronger the belief. That's how a belief system is built. If you've thought the same thing or similar things, a lot of times you got a really strong what? Belief. If you had people tell you over and over and over again that that is truth, you got a lot of cards, you got a lot of files, you got a really strong what? Belief. You only have one card, you only have a couple cards, you got a weak what? Belief. And these cards have been gathering in your mind for how long? Ever. How long? How long? Some of you guys aren't believing me on this, uh, bless you, on this theory. You're like, oh, you know, like that's great, it's a great analogy, but is that really how our mind works? The answer is what? Yes. For those of you guys that are interested in the, the neurology of it, there's a process in our mind called the RAS. That's your library. It's your filter. Matter of fact, last study I read, science has proven, you guys listening? Are you listening? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. Science has proven 
that at any given moment, there's about two million pieces of information that we could take in. How many? Two million. Two million things happening in every single moment of our lives all around us. Two million pieces of information going on right now inside this room. Some of them you recognize. What color is the banner behind me? Right. You guys didn't even agree on that one. That was weird. <laughs> Some of them you recognize. Most of those two million, you don't. The things we tend to recognize, maybe things you see, right? Things you hear, things you feel, things you touch. But most of the two million, you don't even know what was going on. How many people are standing next to that wall over there? <laughs> Sorry, I know that was awkward, you know. <laughs> Two million pieces. Here's the sad fact of how our mind works. Your brain cannot internalize two million things at a time. Matter of fact, if you tried to actually take in two million things all at once, you would walk around just sensory overload, completely freaked out. Your hair would be taller than mine, standing on all ends, that's how you walk around life. Two million things are going on, but we have to distort that, we have to distill that, we have to minimize that down to a simple thing that we can actually process up here. Anybody want to take a guess? Out of two million things that are happening, how many we can actually absorb at one time? Some of you guys are smart enough to realize the answer is always on the slides behind me. <laughs> how many? How many? 134. 134. How many are out there? Two million. Two million. How many can we actually internalize? 134, which means we are missing a whole lot of information that's going on around us all the time. It's amazing at these events, people will come up to me, they'll come up to me after and they go, one person, today was so awesome. Today changed the way that I've thought all my life. Today I got an aha moment, right? Leaving here today, my life will be different because of what I got out of that information. Some people walk out of these events and their life has changed. They're taking immediate and radical action. Person next to him slept through half of it. He's like, why did I get up in the morning? <laughs> Were they in the same place? At the same time? Did they see the same thing? Did they? Did they have the opportunity to? Yes. But did they see the same thing? Two million down to 134. Because when I first saw to learn this, I was like, two million things, that's a lot of things to take in. If only two million gets distilled down to 134, that means the majority of things we don't even acknowledge or absorb. And the root question to all of this, if there's two million things out there and you're only going to internalize 134, what in the world chooses what 134 bits you decide to pick up? Hello? Anybody want to take a guess on that one? Your brain is programmed to pick up the 134 bits that harmonize most with your existing You guys, I'm not making this up. Some of you guys remember learning about this in science class. RAS, the reticular activating system. <laughs> the filter. The filter that talks with the library that says, you know what, this is the beliefs I have in my head, there's two million things going out there, I can't absorb them all, I'd be freaked out, so I gotta absorb 134, I'm gonna choose to pick up the 134 that are gonna reaffirm the belief system that I have. How many of you guys have ever woken up on the wrong side of the bed? <laughs> Some of you guys are like, this morning? <laughs> Let me just take a guess, right? Woke up on the wrong side of the bed. What happened that day? Everything went what? 
Let me take a guess. Wrong side of the bed, everything's going what? What color was every single traffic light on the way to work that day? Why? How come when you're late, every light is always what? Why? Because they're here late. One theory? Who's ever bought a new car before? Oh, yeah. That's what I was immediately thinking. What was the last car you got? BMW. <laughs> Even outside of BMWs, everyone I'm going to think right now of the last new car they got. On three, tell me the last new car you got. One, two, three. You went to the lot, you picked out the car, you're all excited, you got the warm and fuzzies driving off of it, you're feeling all good. The minute you drive off that lot, what do you see everywhere? Who's had that experience? I'll go with your theory. They're after us. <laughs> so I'll give you two options. Option A. The minute you drove off that lot, the world had a secret meeting. <laughs> so we're just gonna mess with you. And the minute you drove off that lot, Intentionally, people drove the same car everywhere you went. Option A. <laughs> or option B. Those cars were always there. You just didn't have a file built in your head big enough for it to shift your filter to turn that from the two million bits that it was ignoring now into part of the 134 that you chose to absorb, option B. <clears throat> scary, guys. It's a scary thing. When you start to realize that there's so much out there. And what you're basing decisions on every single day is about that much. And what's even scarier so prior to coming in here today, those 134, they're not even determined by you. They were determined by your parents, and your teachers, and your environment. It built the belief system you have in your head right now. How many of you guys get pissed off? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I, I, I'm often told, it's like, Blake, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. I've been told that all my life. Before success as an entrepreneur, this side or the other, I've been told that all my life. You're so lucky. And I thought about that, it's interesting. I grew up in an environment where I told you my dad was a what? Yeah. And I don't know if you guys are police officers in the room, or you know law enforcement. But my dad was more than just a cop. He was like extreme OCD, like paranoia. Like, I'm not even joking. You're leaving the house, turn off all the lights. Did you unplug everything? Right? He'd sit there and he'd stress all the time about how something might go what? Wrong. I remember growing up, and the first law I was ever taught was by a guy named Murphy. <laughs> Quoted that from when I was, Murphy's Law, Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong, will. Oh, you guys do Murphy too? <laughs> God, he lived by that, right? He lived by that. It, it might have been a product of maybe personality, or it might have been a product of, you know, a profession to, talk, to think like that, right? But he walked around with that mentality, everything that can go wrong, will, right? Turn off the lights, unplug the toaster. <laughs> Here's what's scary. A lot of times, he was, and I grew up like, he'd sit there and focus on what could go wrong. 
And it was crazy how often that that would manifest. And I remember, I didn't, this was before reading books, understanding the mind, understanding the brain, understanding, I'm just like, he thinks about it, it happens. I ain't ever gonna think about that stuff. <laughs> So from a young age, I just decided to think different. Think different, I said, you know, I know where that ends up. I'm not gonna think like that. I'm gonna think, hey, you know what? Everything can go right. Everything can work. Everything is possible. Oh, you're so lucky. You guys, what I'm describing up here goes by a lot of names. Some of you guys have read a lot of books, gone to events. How many of you guys have watched the movie The Secret? Same concept. Law of attraction, magnetism. I mean, you guys have read the book Think and Grow Rich. If you're not raising your hand, that'd be one to write down. You got it in the title. Think and what? Grow rich. Visualization, affirmations, incantations, luck. It's all the same thing. All I'm talking to you guys about is the fact that, you know what, the way we perceive this world is totally determined on the 2 million bits down to 134, which is totally determined by our existing what? Beliefs. But if you were listening to what I just said, here's the reality. If you understand that beliefs are not even truths, beliefs are just files of references, files of thoughts, then by that definition, we could actually create a belief about what? About what? About what? to believe about anything. For better or for worse. How many of you guys have ever met a compulsive liar? No, 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 I mean like a, I mean like a legitimate compulsive liar, right? I mean somebody that is so good at lying, right, that when they're in the middle of a lie, you believe that they believe that what they're saying is actually true. Who knows people like that, right? Here's the scary thing. They they do. They do. Because they have told themselves so many times in their mind that story, reference, file, 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 right? Belief. That they're able to go out there and they're able to be more congruent in something that is false than you are even knowing what's true. Because they have a stronger Works for the positive, too. And you guys follow sports? What's your favorite sport? What's your favorite sport? For the basketball players, I will say, in game seven, up there in a couple rows the other night. We took all our five stars out there to the, uh, the heat game. It was an absolute, absolute amazing game. Amazing life experience. Go Spurs! It was a great game on both sides. Always next year. One of my favorite things to watch is uh, the Olympics. I love watching the Olympics because it's like, you know, it's things you don't see every single day and it's just the ultimate, ultimate, right, of athletes in so many different things. Um, I'm good friends with, uh, with Bodie Miller, so you guys know he's the crazy downhill skier, has a lot of kind of controversy around him and he invited us up to a couple different races and I remember sitting up there watching these guys before they're about to go down the downhill ski, right? <laughs> Have you guys ever seen this on, on television? Like, and they show that before they're about to charge, these guys are flying down this thing, right? 60, 70, 80, 90, you know, 100 miles an hour on skis on snow. And before they go down the hill, right, they're sitting in there, they got their boots on, sitting there, off to the side, eyes closed. Sitting there going like this. What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? Seeing every single move they're about to make. Every turn, every shift, every movement of body weight. What they're going to do here, there, and the other. Over and over and over and over. Reference after reference. File after file. Building a belief of what they're about to do. Jack Nicholas, golfing fans, said the same thing. Take every shot twice. First in my... Then on the green. Pass that on a tiger, same thing. Basketball fans, you go talk to all the best, right? Same concept. People would go out there and they'd think, everybody that has achieved excellence in anything, they'll do it first up here. 
and then they'll do it out here. Building the what? Here's the crazy thing about how our mind works. It doesn't even have to be real for you to go out there and build a what? What you put in your head every single day, every thought that you have, whether it's truth or whether it's not, is building that filter in your mind that is determining how you respond and how you perceive the world every single day. You guys, if you understand, are you listening? Yes. yes. Are you listening? Yes. 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 If you get this, yes. Yes. If you get this, yes. you're going to realize. You're going to realize two things. Number one, that coming in here, you're going to leave maybe a little bit pissed. And the reason you're going to leave pissed is because you're going to realize that you've been living every single day based on 134 out of 2 million bits that you call your world. And those 134 bits are determined by everything that everybody else stuck in your mind. Some of you guys, you know what? Some of you guys have different upbringings than the person next to you. You had different influences than the person next to you. You grew up in different households with different teachers and different parts of the world than people next to you. And you know what? It wasn't your fault. You had no choice. But the second thing you're going to realize is leaving here today, if you understand how this works, now you do have a what? Choice. choice. You do have a what? Choice. Because once you understand how this works, you get to determine what thoughts you have. You get to determine what references you build. You get to determine what you put up here. You get to determine how you program your own filter, which means you get to determine what 134 bits you pick up, which means you get to determine how you perceive your world every single day, if you understand how this works. Yes, to me, I categorize beliefs in only two things. They're not good, they're not bad. They're not even right or wrong. That's not how belief systems work. You've got to abandon that belief that they're good and bad or right or wrong because it's just not true. My personal belief, I believe every belief is a lie. Is that true? I personally believe every belief is a lie. Is that true? Does it matter? I believe it. Here, here's why I say that. If you believe every belief is a lie, why not choose lies that are going to work for you? And get rid of the lies that don't. To me, there's only two types of belief. You've got empowering and you've got disempowering. Empowering beliefs move you closer to where you want to go. Disempowering beliefs keep you from getting to where you want to go. Two buckets. Empowering and what? Disempowering. That's how the, that's how the mind works. Now, the only way you can categorize and start to go out there and rewire the script up here. How many guys wouldn't mind giving your whole mental computer a refresh by a show of hands? All right? How many guys wouldn't mind having an operating system, a belief system up here that served you and keep you focused in doing what you need to do to get to where you want? How many guys wouldn't mind that? Right? Because in order for you to be able to start to categorize thoughts, you have to know where you're going. Because you can't have something that says the power and discipline moves me forward or moves me back unless you know where you are going. I'm going to share with you guys a philosophy. I, I spoke a little bit to our regional directors and above out here last night. When I got my first nice car as a young entrepreneur, right, I went from my 97 white Honda Civic, right, manual windows. Anybody want to guess what brand my first nice car was I got when I was 20, 21? What was it? What was it? BMW. Oh, you guys were brilliant. <laughs> what was it? BMW. And when I first got that nice car as a young entrepreneur, I was so excited. Obviously, a lot of you, when you get your first BMW, one of the, one of the cool things you do is you want to put like a custom license plate right, on your car. Like, who wants a bunch of numbers and letters when you can come up with something on your own? So my license plate, people would follow me around. I go, Blake, I got a question. What's end of it? End of it. Because my license plate on the back of my first car, I still have it today, is E-N-D-N-M-N-D. And I'm like, no, 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 not end of it. End in mind. It's a concept from Stephen Covey, for those of you guys that like reading the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He said, begin with the what? End in mind. mind. What is it that you want? Where is it that you're going? I meet a lot of people, and I realize that a lot of people wake up every day. They go through motions every single day. 60,000 thoughts a day, 90% the same as yesterday. And they don't even know why! Where does this end up? 
Where does this path go? One year, five years, ten years, twenty years. Where are we going? They never stopped for a moment and said, where am, what am I trying to do? I'm going to walk you guys through an exercise real quick. You're going to want a piece of paper and a pen out in a moment. But I'm going to ask you guys just for a moment, have fun with this. I want you to remove the barriers that most people operate by every single day. In other words, if I were to ask you all right now, why aren't you living the life that you deserve? Why aren't you living the life that you know you can get? Right? Why isn't that your life today? Most people would look at me and say, well, Blake, it's because I don't have enough. Oh, really? Or I don't have enough. Wow. Doesn't matter who I ask that question, it always comes down to the exact same thing. Money and what? Human life cycle. Spend the first half of your life chasing money. If you ever catch it, spend the rest of your life chasing time. Oh, sad. Let's say you woke up tomorrow and didn't have to worry about it. You woke up tomorrow, put yourself in that state real quick, and you didn't have to worry about it. You woke up tomorrow, you went to the bank, you pulled out your card, you stuck it in the machine, and all of a sudden it looked back at you and said, Unlimited funds. How many guys would be? That's like a really good day, right? <laughs> Unlimited funds. Don't have to worry about money. You did not make decisions based on monetary restraints, which means if you don't have to worry about money, you don't have to worry about what? Draw a big circle on your piece of paper. I'm going to give you guys about 60 seconds. Real simple question. Tomorrow we wake up, money and time are not an issue. I want you guys to write as fast as you can, as many things as you can. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Money and time, not an issue. Where would you go? What would you buy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Paid off the credit card, paid off the house, paid off this, paid off that. That was done in minute one. Now what? Right. Who would you help? Where would you go? What would you start? What would you create? Where would you live? Who would you live with? What would you do? For those of you guys not writing anything, I guarantee you, you'll get all of that.
On three, tell me one thing you would do. One, two, three. Build a badass treehouse. How many guys there was something you'd buy? What was the first? I just, on three. But first, first thing you're going to go buy. One, two, three. Motorboat. Motorboat. You guys, that's okay. There's nothing greedy about that. You deserve it. Buy the car. Buy the house. Buy the house is. Yeah. Is that even a word? <laughs> How many guys would go somewhere? Where would you go? Rock the Camino. You guys, the world's a big place. The world is a big place. How many guys is traveling, seeing the world, experiencing people, experiencing culture, seeing? How many guys is that a part of your list? It amazes me how many people don't get out and see the world we live in. You guys, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Two nights ago, I was in Miami. I was sitting at a heat game. Saturday before that, I was in Ontario, capital of Canada, celebrating a wedding of one of our global ambassadors. The Saturday before that, I was out in London pre-launching a country. The Saturday before that, I was in San Diego throwing a celebration. The Saturday before that, I was out in London. Right? The Saturday before that, I was out in Bali having a wedding. The Saturday before that, there's my last five weeks. <laughs> Ask any of our five stars their last couple weeks. You guys, it is what? It is what? Possible. Where would you guys go? One, two, three? Everywhere. Bora Bora? Australia? I once had someone say, Blake, the day I woke up in that position, I would travel the world without a suitcase. <laughs> buy what I buy when I get there, leave it when I leave. How many guys was there someone you would help? Who would it be? First person, one, two, three. How many guys had plans for your kids, grandkids? How many guys had plans for your, your parents, relatives? How many guys had some sort of philanthropic cause, charity initiative that you would give your time to? It's an interesting question, right? Most people are so absorbed, chasing money, chasing time, never getting out of that cycle. They never stop to think, what would I do if that was an issue? The reason it's an interesting question is here's what I'm really asking. What I'm really asking is what are you passionate about? Because at the end of the day, if you didn't have to do anything, you would only do something if you're what? Passionate it. about it. What are you passionate about? That's what it asks. What drives you? You guys, I'm telling you, you have to start with that. You have to begin with the what? You guys, and I, I don't have even enough time to spend on this section as I should, but it all starts here. It all starts here. I told the regional directors last night, that same exercise I just did with you, when I was 19 years old and first got introduced to this industry, I'd go to a similar training like this every single Saturday. Did it for years. True. Never miss a Saturday. Every Saturday. I will say the speakers were not as good as these guys. <laughs> Nor was the content ever different. But every single Saturday, someone would say, take out a piece of paper, draw a big circle. For 10 minutes, we'd sit there and write. <coughs> you guys, I still have, true story, my home office, I have an entire bookshelf full of all my personal journals. I started with those black and white med jerk composition books. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's crazy to go back and look at the dream circles. It's crazy, it's almost eerie how a dream circle can become a live place. You guys, I'm telling you, there's something powerful to writing it down, declaring it over and over and over again. Making it visual, putting it out there. Everything is a thought before it's a thing. Build a belief, a belief, a belief, a belief, a belief. A belief that it is what? Possible. Here's what happens over time. Pretty soon, you realize that you're so committed to that. Pretty soon you realize that's your life. That right there is your life. And maybe your life five years from now, and maybe your life ten years from now, but that is your life. And pretty soon it's such a strong belief that you simply refuse to settle for anything less than that. Guys, we only live once. This is not a dress rehearsal. 
Why wouldn't you go after and make it all that it can be? Why wouldn't you think about it and program it out of here? Why wouldn't you wake up every morning and instead of hitting snooze 82 times on the alarm clock, you woke up every morning excited? Because you said, you know what? Today I move closer to where I'm committed to be. You went to bed at night fulfilled because today you got closer to the life you know you will live. It's a different level of living. Guys, when you have clarity on where you're going. I'm telling you. How many of you guys will commit to me? You'll spend time with you and your significant others actually detailing your dream circle. Will you guys do this? Will you do this? Yeah. I believe half of you. Will you do this? Yeah. Will you do this? Yeah. yeah. Guys, once you figure out where you're going, I'm telling you, it simplifies life. It simplifies decision making. Because every time you're in a moment of decision, there's only two answers. There's only two options. Moment of decision, what do I do? One belief is empowering. The empowering belief says, that brings you closer to that circle. One belief is disempowering. The disempowering belief pushes you one step away from that circle. Guys, if you have a point of reference, if you know where you're going, if you have a destination, you know, do I turn left or do I turn right? You know where you're going. Problem is, most people have no idea where they're going every day. It's my theory on why people have lost the ability to make decisions in this world. Like, all decisions. What do you want to do tonight? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. What do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. That's where you're committed to be. You build that belief that that will be your life. Every moment of decision, one decision is empowering. Empowering moves you what? Closer. One decision is disempowering. Disempowering moves you what? This becomes the game. You guys, the game's real simple. How do you build up empowering beliefs? And how do you break down disempowering beliefs? That's the game. This is the game. This guy hasn't even talked one thing about a shake. He hasn't even talked one thing about a comp plan. Guys, here's a secret. The whole world wants to be healthier. And the whole world's life would be easier if they made more what? Money. Yes, we have something that pretty much the whole world has a need for. 232 million people, guys, that are obese. We've touched like 1% of them. You guys, that's not the hard part, right? The hard part is building the belief system up here that's going to move you toward that. Taking out the garbage that your teachers put in there when you were five that you're still operating with. How many of you guys right now, and this is where you kind of put yourself on the limb, how many of you guys right now are willing to shout out a simple belief that's keeping you from getting to where you want to go? Something that when you go to take action, you go to make that phone call, you go to have that challenge party, you go to do what you know you want to do, all of a sudden you got that yak yak in your head. You guys know what I mean by yak yak? Right? That noise, that voice inside your head that says something that keeps you from moving forth. Some of you guys are like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. I don't have voices inside my head. That's the voice I'm talking about. How <laughs> <laughs> many of you guys are willing to say, what's one of those disempowering beliefs? Yeah. Rejection? Yeah. Fear. Yeah. I'm afraid of talking to that person. I want to talk to that person. They're going to say no. Right? Oh, it's probably not the right time. Oh, I'll talk to them later. Yak, 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 yak. Empowering or disempowering? Disempowering. You guys, real simple. You're in a moment where you know you need to do something. You got a belief that comes into your head. You categorize it. You say that belief is what? Disempowering. Reframe it. Do I really care if this person says no? Right? If it moves it closer to my dream circle. I can never say the wrong thing to the right person. They say no, it just means no for now. If I, am I willing to go through 97 no's if it means I find three yeses that make that circle my reality? You guys get this? Real simple. Why don't you shift that belief into an empowering belief that says, yes, that makes sense, I'm going to take action. I can't mess this up. I can't say the wrong, wrong thing to the right person, right? If they say no, it's not something personal. They're just saying it's not the right time for them right now. Is that okay? The answer is what? Yes. Give me another thing that's keeping you from getting to where you want to go. My full-time job. My full-time job. I can't build my business because I have a what? Even though if you go poll all of our ambassadors, you'll find that 90 plus percent of them hit ambassador with a... 
I'm going to work full time at my job and part time on my fortune. Oh, Jerome fans in here, right? Yeah, right? I'm going to work, you know, full time on my job. I'm going to work part time on my fortune. What else? Baby. I have a baby. I'm sure that's going to stop Nick Sarnicola and Ashley Briggs. <laughs> you know what? My baby, by the time that they grow up to know what's going on, they're going to have the lifestyle that they deserve. They're going to live in the place that they live. They're going to go to the schools that they should go to. They're going to have the environment around them they should have. They're going to have the care that they give. You know what? By the time that they're old enough to know, you won't have a job, you won't have to clock in. You'll be able to be at every game, you'll be able to be at every dance lesson, you'll be able to be there. You'll be the parent that baby needs because of what you do now. I have a baby. See the difference? What else? I'm seen and not heard. I'm passionate about that dream circle. I'm passionate about the solution we have here. I know that what I have can make an impact on that person, and I'm going to make sure they hear me, so when I go out there and have success, they can't come to me and say, how come you never told me this was there? Shift it. Anyone else? Mental illness. Mental illness? I'm scared to ask this question, but <laughs> clarify. <laughs> You want to know all my honest answer to that as a delicate subject? I meet so many successful bipolar people, it's scary. It's scary. And I'm not going to go into all of that. I'm not the doctor, I'm not the clinician, but I'll tell you, I meet so many. The key is, right, when it's time to focus, right, when they're in a good place, focus. Right? When they're in a bad place, make sure they have the support system around them and the people around them to acknowledge and understand it and keep it going. I mean, truth, I meet so many people in this industry that reach ambassador and beyond that are the exact same thing. Absolute truth. You guys, here's the thing. No matter what you say, whether it's time, rejection, failure, work, full-time this, background this, no matter what you say, here's an absolute fact. I can find a number of people that are in the exact same position as you, or worse, right here and right now, that are out there every day making it happen because that circle is what they're committed to. That is a fact. It is what? This is an exercise you're not going to get in this moment. It's an exercise you're not going to master this week. If you understand the concept here. This is what I want. I'm going to build a belief that that will be my life. And every time I have a moment of decision, I'm going to stop for a minute and identify, is that moving me closer or is that moving me away? And if it's something that's moving me away, I'm going to reframe that belief. I'm not going to think this. I'm going to think this because this is where I want to go. That is the game. Are we getting it? Say again. Yeah. Are we getting it? Say again. Yeah. Guys, and then on the flip side, put yourself in an environment that's going to inundate you with the beliefs you need. This is not rocket scientists, right? I can't even say scientists. This is not rocket science. <laughs> Take out the garbage and fill it with the good stuff. When you have Kevin Merriweather and the leaders up here saying, you got to get to vitality. The reason they're saying you got to get to vitality is they know a place like that is going to inundate you with the beliefs. You can't surround yourself with 12,000 Visalians, see all the champions, all the stories, people crossing the stage, thousands of BMWs, all new ambassadors, hear the people around you, feel the energy, meet the doctors, see the biggest product launch and buy history facts. It'll happen in 27 days. You can't put yourself in that environment and not leave with your belief tank absolutely full. All kinds of new references. It's not just a secret, guys, when people walk up, right, bulletproof, 10 feet tall, hair on fire, absolutely congruent, because they had the references. They built up their what? Beliefs. And beliefs determine your actions. Actions determine your what? But Blake, I can't find a babysitter. Empowering or disempowering? Disempowering. But Blake, right, I don't have the funds right now. Empowering her? But Blake, insert excuse here. You guys, and I'm not here to tell you you have to go. All I'm here to tell you is if that circle's what you really want, 
why wouldn't you want to put yourself in an environment that's going to help you reshape up here? Because that's what makes all the difference. You guys, as I wrap up here, has this helped you a little bit? Yes. Has it helped you a little bit? Yes. As I'm telling you, if you understand that, you're going to look at everything different walking out of this room than you did walking in here today. Everything you see, you're going to realize it's not even reality. It's a mere small perception. 134 out of 2 million bits. And you're going to start to take inventory of those 2 million, those 134 bits. And you're going to stop those 134 bits from being placed there by what happened when you were this big. And you're going to start taking control of your life and consciously choosing the belief system you build. That's the point of this training. You guys want to know what's possible? No? I'll skip that section. I'm out. <laughs> There will be people in this room that leave here today say you're branded. They'll take all the information you got this morning and what you're getting through the rest of the day and you'll go out there and apply it. Simple things. Have simple conversations. There'll be people that leave here today. What month are we in right now? June. June. What month are we in right now? June. There'll be people brand new that leave here today and they go out there and they become a director by the end of the month. They become a director by the end of the month. They say, I'm going to go put myself in a situation where I can get all those beliefs. They'll go to Vitality. They'll go to Vitality. They'll check in. They'll get hand today. Cash in the check in. You know what? They'll bring a couple people with them at that event because they're passionate, they're excited, and they want their people to have the same opportunity as them. They'll sit there with a couple people, right, in Orlando, brand new, in a couple weeks, 27 days, and watch us roll out, guys, a new product category. I promise you that it's going to create a wave, a momentum, and a run that is bigger, faster than what we had over the last three years. How many of you guys are excited to know that? stage and they'll go to regional director next month. They'll be celebrating their BMW by the end of July because of the positioning they had there. And all of a sudden, now they have a story. They're like, you know what? I got a BMW. They're running around telling everybody they just qualified. And their people that they brought said, if you can do it, guess what? I can do it. They had the same belief. They were at that event. By the time August comes around, now their three buddies are out there qualifying for regional director. They're driving BMWs at the end of August. How cool is that? You plus your three friends all rolling you new rides. Oh, by the way, three BMWs now makes you a national director at August. Now all of a sudden, everybody has belief. If they can do it, you can do it. Those three people do the exact same thing. They become national directors. By the time we're in November at our next national success training, you're crossing the stage as a presidential director. Presidential director with national directors in your organization. How many guys believe that's possible? Yeah. It's what? It's what? Uh -huh. November comes around, we roll out our entire New Year's game plan. Right? And I'm telling you, don't think we haven't thought about how we're rolling out next year already. Come on. Um. All of a sudden, you leave there as a presidential director. You go into the new year, launch an entire new campaign. You end this year, you cross ambassador. You're celebrating at the end of this year, knowing you just hit ambassador. When you start the new year, you already know you're going to make six figures, and you haven't even clocked in an hour in 2014 yet. How many of you guys want to be in that position? <laughs> January 1st, things explode. Everybody's jumping on the brand new product category. We're announcing our next new country. Hint, hints. All of a sudden, you have an organization built. You're going to the year of ambassador. You're starting 2014, guys. You're making your game plans. And you're sitting there realizing some of your dream circles getting checked off. And you're set up, guys, over next year not to do $100,000 a year, but your goal is $250,000 or $500,000 for 2014. That is what? Possible. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. Yeah. Possible, and that'll happen for some people in this room. But that vision is possible, guys, if you embrace it, you believe it, and most importantly, you put that into action starting today. The next 27 days is absolutely paramount to get positioned for vitality. Are you guys committed to taking out the garbage? Yeah. Rewiring the bleeps? Yeah. Are you guys committed to that dream circle being your life? Yeah. I look forward to seeing a lot of you guys cross the stage in 27 days at vitality. Thank you guys very much.